Hi, I'm Jay Goldman, and you are watching Status Update on Butterscotch.com. Today, we're going to take a look at the brand new Facebook messaging, which just launched November 15th at a press event held at the Facebook office. Well, what's the big deal about Facebook messaging, you might ask yourself? Well, you've already got an inbox on Facebook, and you can get messages in it, so what's with the relaunch? Well, the answer is really three things. The first is seamless messaging across SMS, Facebook chat, email, and Facebook messages. They brought all of that together in a unified inbox so that you don't have to really worry about where a message came from, it just gets pulled directly into the inbox and occurs along with all of the other messages that are there. It's a big relief if you use those different mediums and you're always checking the different ones to get different messages, you can now find everything in a single place. Number two is a conversation history so you always have a full history with everyone that you chat with. They drew uh, an analogy when they were launching this to the box of letters that your grandparents might have had from during their courtship, which they could always go back and look at. For the people who came in generations after that, we stopped sort of sending letters to each other. Yeah, that whole courtship happened over the phone, in which case you have no record of it. Or it happened over email and you've maybe lost the email address since then or shut it down or anything like that. This now gives you that full history from the first time you meet somebody on Facebook and say, hey, let's go have a coffee, right up to, honey, don't forget to pick up the kids at 6 o'clock. So long conversation history there. You can also get a, an at facebook.com email address, so you can actually participate using email. And uh, they've got some more stuff around that coming up um, to make that a little bit easier to do. The last thing is a social inbox, which uses your friend status on Facebook to elevate your friend's emails above all of the other stuff that might end up in your inbox. So if you have an email that comes in from somebody that you're friends with on Facebook, it will go into your inbox. Everyone else goes into another folder, and you can teach Facebook messaging over time that you'd like those messages from those other people to end up in your inbox when you get them. At least you know that those messages are probably coming from real people. It's pretty hard to create and maintain a fake Facebook profile. It's not impossible, and there are certainly some out there. But for the most part, Facebook's got a lot of pretty sophisticated software and people whose responsibility is making sure that Facebook profiles are genuine. And given that that's true, you get a whole lot less spam if the inbox messages that you're getting come from people who have been authenticated by Facebook as being real. That's not to say that you want to necessarily get messages from them, but at the very least, it's coming from real people. And because Facebook knows if you're friends with them or not, it can prioritize the ones that come from existing relationships relationships. So you should get a whole lot less spam. Some of the other things that they've talked about here, there are no subject lines, so you can just pick a friend and start typing. It's really considered a conversation over an ongoing period of time rather than a one-off message that they might respond to. The important thing to keep in mind here, and I think part of the reason there was a fairly large backlash against this when it came out, people leading up to it had heard rumors that Facebook was coming out with a messaging product. They were really excited to see if this was going to be a Gmail killer. And Mark Zuckerberg was very uh, very stressed on the point that it's not an email killer, it's not intended to be an email killer, it's a conversation product. When they went out and talked to a lot of the younger Facebook users, high schoolers, that kind of thing, they learned that their oppression of, of email is that it's too formal and slow, and so they don't use it. This is the solution for those people. It's really not aimed for those of us who grew up with email, and we probably aren't going to like it very much, at least until they start adding more features in that make it a better solution to match what we actually use email for. A couple things you should know about it. It's got a full integration to the mobile app. So if you've got the iPhone app uh, and you have access to messaging, you should be able to use it on the iPhone. To be clear, not everybody has access. So you can actually go to facebook.com slash about slash messages, learn a little bit more about the messaging product, and click on a button there to request an invite. It's limited availability for now, but they are giving out invites as uh, they move through the queue. And at some point, they will obviously be rolling out to everybody on Facebook. They did say at the announcement that IMAP support was coming soon, so that actually means that you would be able to check this, this uh, inbox through an outside email client. So for example, if you're on a Mac like this one, you might be able to use Apple Mail. If you're on a PC, you could use Thunderbird or Outlook or one of the other solutions that are on there, and that would allow you to check it. There's a whole other side of this conversation, and we don't have time to get into the whole thing, but essentially people like Tim Berners-Lee, who is largely credited with invention, inventing the World Wide Web, are starting to complain that these sites are basically silos. So Facebook's got their own messaging protocol, their own standard for their inbox. It's locking all that information into Facebook, and Facebook would in fact like that to be the case because it keeps you there and keeps you coming back to it. But what happens over time as more and more of these silos pop up, LinkedIn starts to do the same. We get proprietary email formats. You can't exchange messages between networks. We get uh, internet service providers who start to slow down traffic to certain websites because they haven't made deals with them or in fact block those websites entirely. And we go from this beautiful open platform that the web is right now to a very closed and siloed one. I think he's got a very valid point and it's something to definitely keep in mind. There are people out there who are very 
uh, strong advocates of an open web and with keeping all of this data open. And in some ways, Facebook has bought into that and is starting to talk about transport, transportability of your data, about being able to get it in and out of Facebook. I think that's probably a direction we're going to see a lot more conversation in. But it's just something to keep in the back of your mind as systems like this are launched. Don't forget, if you're looking for a domain, you can get 10% off with this coupon at Hover.com. I'm Jay Goldman. This has been Status Update on Butterscotch.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.